because they belong to us. They don't belong to Joe Biden. They don't belong to, to the BLM. They don't belong, they belong to us. We're the ones who have the right to access them. And what is very apparent to me by what happened with this particular RMP is this is the sign of the future for this administration and the folks on the other side of the aisle. They are going to do everything in their power to deny us access management and use to over 600 million acres of federal lands if they have the ability to do that. And this is just the first step. Good morning. If you've been around for the long haul, you'll know that our channel mostly gained traction back with the Malheur Wildlife Refuge, the standoff that happened there. And uh, that was due to practices being done by the BLM, not Black Lives Matter, but the Bureau of Land Management. Uh, you'll, you'll know that uh, if you were around then, that this had to do with how they were treating a particular, the Hammond family, and that the Bundy uh, crowd pretty much stepped up and tried to bring attention to what was going on. Now, of course, that wasn't the first of the issues when it came to the, uh, the Hammond family, uh, because prior to that, uh, BLM, Bureau of Land Management, targeted Cliven Bundy, Ammon's father, and, uh, and was doing some pretty nefarious things when it came to the land that his animals were grazing on. So it seems like things have not slowed down a bit, and uh, a representative by the name of Harriet Hagman uh, has recently spoke up on this. Now, in my opinion, this is largely flown under the radar when it comes to um, us, period. Uh, I haven't heard anybody talk about this. And in fact, I, I saw the video posted by Forbes, and, um, and it was seven days ago the video was posted. So I want to make sure that I get this information out as well. Uh, do the United States, the people of the United States, a favor and share this share you don't I, I will leave a link to her video in particular you don't have to share my nonsense i ask you to share her message and what she had to say because the bureau of land management are at it again and this time uh, it's being described by harriet as uh, one of the largest land grabs that she's ever seen so again, if you've been around for a little while, you know how this works. And um, the Bureau of Land Management is, is no good. And the government's not supposed to take over large swaths of land, okay? That there's, there's rules in the Constitution that prevents that. However, every single day we see them doing crazy stuff, including stuff that involves eminent domain and what have you in order to gain control of people's land and in turn gain control of the resources that may be in or under that land. And uh, here we go again. They're doing it again. So this information needs to get out there so the people know what's happening. That is what's most important. I'll leave the link to Harriet's video down below, but I will also be playing that here so you can hear it in full. And... Um, we got to put a stop to this. Shalom. I'm proud to testify on my bill to prohibit the finalization of the draft resource management plan or RMP revision and its associated draft environmental impact statement from the Bureau of Land Management that would severely restrict grazing, mining, oil and gas development, recreation and other activities on 3.6 million acres in Wyoming. As everyone in this committee is aware, BLM field districts are required to update their resource management plans in accordance with the Federal Land Policy and Management Act, or FLIPMA. In 2011, the Rock Springs Field Office began the process of updating its own plan. Prior to release of the new draft plan, the Rock, Spring, Rock Springs Field Office had used and implemented the existing RMP since 1997. The new draft, however, that was released for public comment in 2023 is gaining national attention for its unprecedented attack, attack on land access and use. The RMP contains four alternatives for the planning area, including Alternative A, which is the no action alternative, BLM's preferred Alternative B, which would have tremendous negative in, in consequences for the state of Wyoming, our nation, energy independence, access to millions of acres of land, and national security, 
Alternative C, which severely restricts rec recreational activities, and Alternative D, which attempts to balance various uses with the development and conservation, but also significantly hinders existing projects on federal lands. To say that the draft plan is, an, uh, is bad is an understatement, and alternatives B and C are especially bad for Wyoming, which was why there was so much opposition, opposition from my constituents. In typical fashion, the federal government has chosen the very alternative that has the most community opposition and would do the most damage. In total, under the preferred alternative, about 2.5 million acres of land would not be available for new rights of way. This would be an increase of more than 480% placed to off limits for such things as power lines, pipelines, and maintaining roads. The RMP severely restricts vehicle access, including upwards of 4,500 miles of existing roads and trails of all uses, and would remove about 10,000 miles of routes from the transportation network. The plan even calls for limiting vehicles to designated roads across the landscape, but it doesn't clarify what roads it will designate for travel. The draft RMP designates 1.8 million acres of the planning area as areas of critical environmental concern, or ACECs, which undermine all great opportunities for economic development, particularly as it relates to energy production, grazing, and mineral extraction. This is an increase of 1.3 million acres compared to what's currently in the plan. The preferred alternative significantly impacts Wyoming energy production, which is essential to the state and local economy, as well as to national energy independence and security. According to the Department of Interior, in calendar year 2022, leasable minerals in Sweetwater County alone netted over $32 million in revenue for the federal government and $433 million in total for the state of Wyoming. This is not just about mining or energy and mineral extraction, however. This is one of the largest land grabs we've ever seen in an all-out assault on every vital Wyoming industry and the rule of law. Wyoming ranchers are facing a ban on livestock grazing in big game, game habitat during the birthing season, prohibiting range uh, improvement projects such as troughs, reservoirs, and fences, and suspending AUMs that are currently authorized within the planning area. The Wyoming Stock Growers Association highlighted many of the specific impacts this proposed alternative would have on grazing, including the ability to control noxious weeds and other invasive plant spe uh, species. I'm also disheartening about this RMP is the fact that it ignored stakeholder input over the past 12 years. The administration continues to insert itself into every community in America under the guise of claiming to do good, only to outright ignore the community's needs and to pursue bad policies in the pursuit of political goals for, the administ political goals for this administration, goals that are not shared by Wyoming, and, goods and goals that are not in the best interests of our country. In a letter to the Rock Springs field office, Wyoming Sweetwater County commissioners highlighted the fact that, quote, behind closed doors and without any coordination with the county or other cooperating agencies, the BLM has taken a completely politically driven reversal from its original direction and released a proposed RMP and DEIS that eliminates multiple use within the Rock Springs field office and in turn Sweetwater County, end quote. Mr. Chairman, we've seen this kind of thing happen in other areas, including within the Bears Ears Monument designation in Utah and others in Colorado and Arizona. We need to put a stop to these illegal land grabs, administrative overreach, and outright violation of our federal land management laws. We need to protect our communities. The alternatives laid out in the Rock Springs RMP, particularly Alternative B, will destroy Wyoming's local economy. We cannot go on like this. I urge my colleagues to support my bill, which would nullify the implementation of this monstrosity of a plan. I was over in a hearing on judiciary, in the Judiciary Committee, focusing on regulatory reform and what it is that we need to do in terms of addressing the agency overreach that we have seen, and especially in the last 30 years. And I don't think that there is a better example of that than what has been happening in Wyoming recently with the Rock Springs District Office Resource Management Plan. It is very apparent to me that that particular document in the alternative B that was chosen recently by the BLM or last fall um, is a test case. And it is an effort by the BLM to determine whether they can turn our BLM lands essentially into National Park Service lands. And to exclude all of us, not only in terms of oil and gas development, but mining, grazing, and anything that produces uh, revenue or generates revenue. 
Coming from Wyoming, 48% of our surface estate is owned by the federal government. 65% is owned by, 65% of our mineral estate is also owned by the federal government. And what is very apparent when you live in the West is that there are only certain uses that can generate revenue on vast swaths of land. It may not be that you always have oil and gas in a particular area or coal in a particular area or uranium or grazing, but together when you look at the way that our lands are situated and you look at the nature of our vegetation, uh, this precipitation that we receive and those sorts of things, if you block grazing, if you block oil and gas development, if you block mining, there is no other way to generate revenue off of literally tens of millions of acres of land. And as a result, it not only is going to affect Wyoming and the Western United States, it will affect the country as a whole. Uh, Director Bingham, I appreciate you being here today. We appreciate all that you do, both for Sweetwater County and for the state of Wyoming. And you highlighted in your testimony many of the grievances regarding the process by which the preferred alternative, Alternative B, came about from the BLM. You're not the first one to bring this to my attention, and I want to highlight some testimony that I listened to from a former BLM staffer given to Wyoming's Joint Federal Natural Resources Management Committee. James Evans, Evans, who was a Rock Springs field office employee while the draft RMP was being developed, testified that the BLM's preferred alternative received very little time and effort in its development. In his own words, he said, quote, the science and the work was all done on D, alternative D. We sat down and in one week, we did alternative B and C together. After that was done and, see, and we sat down with the cooperative agencies, we spent the next five or six years developing alternative D. So the BLM spent one week on B and C and five to six years on alternative D. Director Bingham, can you expound on what you know about the length of time that the BLM took to create what is now the preferred alternative in a 3.6 million acre resource management plan? Thank you, Congressman Hageman. Yes, so back in 2012, when the cooperative meeting started, there were just a few meetings uh, related to the alternative B and C, and also during that time, there were a little bit of discussions with on alternative D. So there was a small amount of time in that, there were a few cooperator meetings, and then there was a, a meeting at the end of the year, just one comment period during for those alternatives B and C. I did hear Mr. Evans' testimony. I was there actually at the meeting via Zoom uh, where he was testifying in front of the legislator where it doesn't surprise me that it was done in that time period um, just when you look at all the implications of it and that it was described to cooperators as a bookend or placeholder and then alternative D was the compromise to come in between. So that is from 2015 on um, there was a break because of the sage grass issue. It was all focused on alternative D and we were actually directed to only focus on alternative D for the remainder of that five to six years that you mentioned. So the entire process for FLIPMA and the way that we manage our federal lands, the stakeholders that are in the communities themselves, this entire process is to ensure that the people who are actually affected by the decisions are engaged and able to participate and that we are able to manage these lands in the best interest of everybody involved. And that's why you talk about things such as balance. We look at recreation, we look at access for oil and gas, we look at grazing, and not every single acre is used for all of those different types of activities, but you do a balance and you do a mosaic and you do a quilt and you figure out how we're going to manage these resources really ultimately in the best interests of the, of the, of the people of the United States of America, because they belong to us. They don't belong to Joe Biden. They don't belong to, to the BLM. They don't belong, they belong to us. We're the ones who have the right to access them. And what is very apparent to me by what happened with this particular RMP is this is the sign of the future for this administration and the folks on the other side of the aisle. They are going to do everything in their power to deny us access management and use to over 600 million acres of federal lands if they have the ability to do that. And this is just the first step. I thank you for the work that you've done. I thank everybody for being here and the work that you do making our lives better. And with that, I yield back.